excuse me. Mm. As that goes around, would you throw in some prayer again, please? Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in life. All of it. Help us to honor the feelings that we're experiencing. Help us to know that they bring us divine messages. Grant us willingness. Grant us courage. Reveal to us our next step. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Your weapon, sir. Hey, cat, you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Had our hand up before. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, family. Oh, after um, Sunday mornings, I always say to myself, wow, that message was just for me. <laughs> oh, and I needed that uh, spiritual food. I love everyone here so much. I love Divine, my fun house. Um, so, um, give what we can. Uh, give the basket a blessing. And so good to see everyone. And I have learned so much coming here. All the fun, different classes we have through the week. I've been coming here for 10 years. And wow, my spirit, I love my spirituality. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. While that's going around, um, I'm going to tell you about an upcoming workshop I'm going to be doing, <coughs> and then we'll do a guided meditation. That work for you? Um, I will be presenting a Intuitive Tarot Mastery and Certification Workshop. Uh, I'm really excited to, to share this with you. This is everything you're going to need to know, uh, everything from how to turn on your intuition to turn it off appropriately. Um, and how to be of service, how to be a blessing in that uh, uh, gift of doing intuitive readings. So if you would, I think I passed out most of this last week. If anybody did not get one, um, Valerie, would you make sure they get one? It's, a, it's an eight month program and I've, we've priced that really, really nicely there. <clears throat> anyway. All right, guided meditation. Thank you. Lights. Let's take a deep breath in and exhale. Another deep breath in. And exhale. One more deep breath in. And exhale. And allow yourself to center into the core of your being. This is midway in your body, actually in your heart space. Midway between your breastbone and your spine. Most protected part of your being, your physical form. In this heart space, in this core, allow your awareness now to be mindful and aware of the energy field that surrounds your body, your aura. <clears throat> what is in your core is resonant in your aura. Whatever you're experiencing right now, just notice it. Because whatever's in your aura is what you're going to draw to you. If you're feeling angry and frustrated, 
then the universe notices that energy vibration in your aura <clears throat> and sends that to you. Sends you situations that will activate that. Not to tick you off, but to bless you so that you can take a look at it. So whatever you're experiencing is this beautiful part of that depth finder to give you an awareness of where you are so you can shift into uh, a higher state of energy. So now bring your attention to the bottoms of your feet. And notice that the energy field at the bottom of your aura extends about a foot or two into the earth. And as you open the bottoms of your feet, the lower energy portion of your aura also opens and becomes a vent. The denser energies of those unpleasant feelings are heavy. It takes conscious awareness to hold on to them. So for now, just for, for a little bit, allow yourself to just let go. Take a deep breath in and exhale and just let go. And those heavier, denser energies that we call unpleasant just fall away from you. And while they're falling away from you, bring your attention now to the top of your head. And there's an energy portal there. There's also an energy portal at the very top of your aura. And they're linked. So as you open your awareness at the top of your head, the energy field at the top of your aura also opens. And this grants you a, an energetic connection a divine connection to all that is, divine source. And you may specifically have a heart's desire or an issue that you would like to have clarity about or you would like to have uh, strengthening about or willingness or courage. And by stating that awareness, that request, for that from Divine Source, then you will be energetically, instantaneously connected to that aspect from Divine Source that best serves you now. And that may appear as a portal of light that might be golden light, might be silver light, might be blue light, might be green light, might be iridescent light or some combination thereof. Whatever you are experiencing is what is right for you right now. Allow that light to shine in through the top of your head and let it shine into your heart space. And from your heart space, let that light emanate through your whole body and activate in your energy field. Let's take a deep breath in and exhale to allow that easier access. And more and more of that denser energy is falling away. Now gently close the bottoms of your feet and the bottom portal and you're a vessel of light. Letting that light, that energy fill you inside and around and fill your aura as well. Even if you don't understand the spiritual significance of whatever color or vibrational energy you're receiving right now, it's all right. Know that what you're experiencing is right for you. And receive that with gratitude. And in this state of reception, let's take ourselves on a little walk. Find your way to a pathway. This will be a garden pathway today. There's flowers blooming throughout the garden. And as you're journeying through the garden, you notice there's 
all kinds of plants and some are very well maintained, some are kind of weedy areas. It's all right, it is just natural. It is what it is. And allow yourself to find your way to the plant or flower or tree that is most appealing to you now. Follow your heart. Do you go to the roses? Do you go to the peach trees? Do you go to the hibiscus? Wherever you go, even if you don't know the name of it, allow yourself to find your way to that which your heart is most drawn to. Perhaps it's a plant that doesn't even exist in reality, but exists on the plane of energy. Perhaps your flowers are crystalline. Whatever you're experiencing is what is right for you. And as you approach this plant, whatever it is, allow yourself to reach out with your awareness and touch it. And allow yourself to receive the vibrational energy that this plant is emitting. Perhaps you'll sense it or feel it or hear the harmonic. You will have an awareness of receiving from this plant. And know that this reception has great spiritual significance for you. And allow yourself to feel that vibration as it enters your being and centers in your heart space. And as you notice that it centers in your heart space, this feeds the light within and feeds the connection. And as you look closer at this plant, you notice that there is something here for you. Perhaps there's something attached to one of the leaves or perhaps there's a, uh, a flower that unfolds that offers you a gift. Perhaps it's uh, a message written on the bark of the tree. Whatever you're experiencing, just know that that has spiritual significance for you. And you can receive that with joy and gratitude right now. But this is something that will give you an insight in your journey, in your soul's purpose. And as you release the plant, you find that you have such joy and gratitude in your heart. And you know that you can carry this joy and gratitude with you in every experience from this moment on. And out of gratitude, you leave a little something here. Perhaps you want to leave a blessing for the plant or uh, leave water for the plant or um, some symbolic object. Maybe you'd like to just lay that at the, at the roots of this plant. Whatever you're led to do, know that it's just the right thing, even if you don't necessarily understand. And as you begin to turn and make your way out of this garden, allow yourself to feel that loving connection, that divine inspiration, that divine guidance, and invite it to walk with you as you walk through your life. And allow yourself to find your way out of the garden, back into this time and space, back into the here and now. You might want to take a deep breath in, and exhale, wiggle fingers, wiggle toes. Welcome back. Does anyone have any questions or comments about their journey to the garden? A lot of tears in that one. A lot of tears in that one. Anyone tell, anybody want to share about that? There's a brave soul. She's tapped into courage. I, 
I know the situation that I'm, that I'm going through. I'm very, very well aware of it. And it is a struggle. But as far as what happened in meditation was, is the, the plant was, there was a stone bench that I sat at, and the plant was lavender. Full bloom, very active with bees all around in it, around it, vibrating. I could feel, when I touched the plant, I could sense and taste and feel the the lavender itself and um, uh, feel the vibrations of the bees working in there. And there was a cedar tree in behind me which kept me shaded and made me feel strong. Um, the, the, there was honey from the bees. I mean, I. I know this doesn't happen this way, but there was honey on the plant from the bees, whatever. Wonderful. It tasted so sweet, and I could taste the lavender inside, which gave me such Lavender honey. Ooh, that sounds like a delight, doesn't it? Just calmness, you know, knowing that I'm going to be doing the right thing, and I have the strength to do it. Um, at any rate... Um, I don't even know what else to tell you. I mean, it was a beautiful experience. What I left on was just lots of tears and gratitude for so, that second. So what I'm hearing for you on your behalf uh, regarding the bees is that is spirit working hard on your behalf to bring you joy, to bring sweetness into this situation, as I, difficult as it may be. Thank you. I, Doesn't that feel right to you? Yeah, it feels right. I wonder like if I need. wonder if honey lavender would be um, healing. Hmm. Yeah, and and definitely, at least for one person, there is definite healing needed. So beautiful. It's beautiful. key, as a matter of fact, to the situation. Were you able to leave a gift? Do you recall? Uh, I, I left tears, but I also, and I think partly because I read an article this morning. Um, at any rate, I left water for the bees. Not just the plant, but for the bees. Wonderful. Right. Good, good, good job. So what, you're, what that's telling you is that um, you are honoring and allowing spiritual work to happen in your behalf. Okay. So you're allowing that, that to be yeah, of assistance to. for you. Yeah. Good job. Because it's hard to allow. You know, it's hard to, to be in that place of willingly receiving. So, good job. Thank you for sharing that. That was very, very sweet, very powerful. Yes, ma'am. Let's see now. Let's see if I can remember. Um, way I had it. What was your plant? My plant was a daisy. A daisy. Love it. And then the uh, energy from the top was like, Oh, white and gold iridescent. When you a second you said that, I saw ivory, this beautiful ivory energy flowing into you. Beautiful. It's beautiful energy. Very sweet. And then there was a ladybug on the daisy, the white daisy. And then I left behind a rose quartz. Okay. Love. So the daisies refer to or reflect back to us choice. Um, and the ladybug, um, they're just fun. Darn it. Um, so you get to have fun. They would like you to choose to have fun. Uh, and, and this gives you the ability to um, change directions quickly. Uh, la the ladybugs will eat bugs, other bugs, that are harmful to the, to the daisy. So this is spirit again, spirit saying, I will help you clarify your choices. Mm -hmm. I will take away all the distractions. I will, like the ladybug eats all the aphids or whatever. So this, the ladybug or spiritual assistance here is here to help debug whatever situation you're in so that you can make really clear, sweet choices for yourself. And the fact that the daisy was white, and this energy was white, this is about getting clear, being pure of heart, and recognizing your, your, the purity of heart. I think, I think you're not the only person that forgets their value, their worth. So this is reconnecting you to that, so that, and realigning you to that truth. And there's your confirmation sound. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Across the aisle over here? Or? Go ahead. Hi. Um, 
My flower was a hollyhock. And oh, I love hollyhocks. My mother used to have them all over the place. Phil used to pull them out and weed them because he thought there were weeds until I said, oh, look, mom's hollyhocks are growing again. He goes, oh, honey, I've been whacking those out. <laughs> well, no wonder I haven't seen those things. But I love hollyhocks. Yes, go ahead. And then there was a grasshopper. Uh-huh. And I left gratitude. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my aura, whatever, was just... A spinning circle of stars. Oh, wonderful! Oh, wonderful! What color was your hollyhock? The, um, I don't, I, I don't know. I didn't see the, the color of it. Okay, that's fine. So hollyhocks stand tall. They grow tall. They're one of the tallest plants in the, in the garden. And the the grasshopper is about. They can leap far. So this is a leap of faith. So you're being given courage and strength to take a leap of faith to do what's necessary on your own behalf. Um, and the energy swirling around you that stars, this is letting you know that you have this cosmic connection. Um, <laughs> there you go again. Uh, <laughs> that's a, yeah, a Tinkerbell stars. Um, so y this is letting you know that you're not alone and that you, you're a piece of stardust. You know, we're all made of stardust, and this is granting you the a connection to that, an awareness of that, to give you courage and strength. Thank you. You're welcome. Mine was a sunflower. It was, I've, I've got some growing at my house, but um, when I walked up to it, it, it bent over and kind of like put its face right here and gave me a snuggle. It was like oh, really, sweet. really cool. Neat. And in one of its leaves was a diamond. Okay. And, and then it looked back up and like sunflowers do, up to the sun, and that caused me to look up too. Um, and I gave it some coal because I thought maybe if it could make diamonds, it could <laughs> make another one. It could make some more. Right, and some miracle grow. So. Okay, all right. So <clears throat> lots going on in that um, meditation. <coughs> The sunflower, again, it, it faces the light. It, it's this ability to face the light, and it's bringing that to you. Mm -hmm. So this is the light kissing your face, allowing yourself to receive that divine kiss, that divine connection, uh, allowing yourself to receive that. Uh, the diamond, uh, this is noticing the many facets of whatever is here for you. So whatever situation you're in, there's lots more facets than maybe you're aware of. Sometimes we only see one side of the story or we only see one part of it. So this is granting you the ability to see all facets of that and to be able to uh, shine and shine brightly no matter what. Uh, you gave it coal, which is allowing it to make more diamonds. But you're also giving it miracle grow. This is allowing, you've given spirit permission to to put you through um, a rapid growth cycle, miracles will happen. You've just said, okay, I'm ready for some miracles. So fasten your seatbelt, hang on. Miracles ha are happening, or miracles are coming your way. All right. I love it. Across the aisle, I think, over here. So as I started down the journey looking for a garden, it took me to a what seemed to be a sand dune. Hmm. And I looked around and I thought, well, where is this garden? And a big wind came. And as the wind started blowing, there appeared a whole garden of nothing but sculptured. Ooh. It was all green and very sculptured garden. And I thought, wow, this is really pretty garden in the sand dune. That is really weird, but it needs a flower. And so I planted a pink orchid in the middle of it. Beautiful, beautiful. So the, the blowing of the sand away is anything that is keeping you from seeing a situation clearly is going to be removed for you. And you'll see it very clearly. Um, the fact that it was already mani manicured lets you know that spirits already got things groomed. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you, you may think that you have to do. No, let, let spirit do its work. Let God do God's work. 
because uh, there's work being done in your behalf. There seems to be a theme with that. Um, and then you planted an orchid. Mm -hmm. Did you say it was pink? Pink. pink. So pink is all about love. Uh, I'm not sure of the energy of an orchid. Anyone know what the energy of an orchid is? I know they love to grow in the shade. Um, it feels like to me, and you, you need to check your own ring true, it feels like to me that this is asking you to really take care of you. You know, nurture you. Because that's a job that nobody else can do but you. And that it's, because orchids take care. They take special care. But if you give them the care they need, the specific uh, temperature and the specific light and all of that, they just bloom like crazy. So this is letting you know that it's really important to take care of you because you are already blooming. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So take good care of your physical form. Take really good care of your spiritual form because that's also significant for you. So taking time for that, for music and prayers and all of that. And I know, I know you already do that. So what do you think this might mean for you? I think, you know, things can bloom no matter, even if it seems like it's a desert. Mm -hmm. Things can still grow and shine. <coughs> And you know, I think this is also saying that um, you have a tendency to plant flowers in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you give them feedback that causes, helps them to grow and helps them to bloom. And I think this is acknowledging that for you as well. And the, the light that I had at the very beginning of was a very yellow, bright light. That's joy. Don't you love it? Way cool. Yes, way cool. Anybody else? One more up front. <coughs> um, the first thing I encountered was this huge round cedar tree. Mm -hmm. And I hugged it and I thanked it for its wisdom. And then it said, it's time for you to pick a flower. So I went and I saw this weeping daisy. Weeping was really um, important. It wasn't a drooping daisy, it was a weeping daisy. So when I went down to sort of bless it, right beside it, what grew out was this beautiful um, stems of different colored crystals. Mm. All different colored crystals. Very cool. And um, what I was given was a tiny, small ceramic frog. And what I gave was, it was confusing because it's like I gave the crystal flower, it bloomed. The daisy, the weeping daisy stood straight up, but it didn't go away. It mm -hmm. didn't turn into the crystal flower. So hmm. it's like what I gave was the crystal flower. Okay, so let's look at that. So the weeping daisy is all about turning sorrow into joy uh, and knowing that sorrow is a choice. That there's a time to grieve. The good book even talks about it. there's a time to grieve. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's also a time to be joyful. And the crystals that came up, all different colors, this is letting you know that anything that is necessary for you to move forward is being gifted to you. You have it all. You can just choose whatever you need. Again, daisies are about choice. So in this situation, you might need a, a purple crystal, a divine connection. And maybe in that situation, you need a green uh, crystal of healing to help heal yourself or someone else. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, the frog is about, um, you know, a leap of faith here. But this is more about healing energy. And frogs are amphibious. They can breathe oxygen and they can breathe in the water. So this gives you the ability to navigate your own emotions and other people's emotions and still come up for air. And know that you, wherever you're at or whatever you're doing, you can breathe and breathe easy. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, thank you. And the giving back was your ability or your willingness to utilize what you've been given. 
Does that feel right to you? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so Phil and I have a final song for you. This is a little different. Um, I played it for him on the way in this morning. Made him cry. So it may not make you cry. It's kind of a joyful little song. Did I get it? This will just prove to you that we're not a bunch of old fuddy-duddies and we actually can have a relatively new song. So we're going to sit And for and all you people our age, just put up with it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to listen to this and then we'll circle up, all right? Oh, we're not going to circle up and do it? Oh, I guess we could. Yeah. You, you just got to be able to see it, that's all. <laughs> 